I am Joshua Rosenthal, and I'm the founder of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City. And how did I hear about macrobiotics? Uh, yeah, how did you get, how did you start, how did you get into macrobiotics? I got into it because my girlfriend was into it. And uh, I woke up one morning at her place and she had all these books about macrobiotics, which I had never heard about. And she was a cook, and uh, I wasn't that interested in the food part, but the yin and yang and the philosophy part really got my interest. I was like, oh my god, this explains everything, and the magic glasses of seeing yin and yang and cause and effect just completely fascinated me. And uh, then I started eating macrobiotically, and my life changed. My health improved. My perception of life improves, and uh, really, you know, Michelle and Aveline just uh, really influenced me with their vision for One Peaceful World, and uh, it really matched up with my parents' vision, and so I've really dedicated my life to making it happen. Mm. So how, how is your school now, kind of, because this, this seems to be like a new macrobiotics, or a fusion of macrobiotics, huh? Yeah, when I, well I'm from Canada, when I moved to New York and I started doing macrobiotic counseling, it didn't really work. People were like, what are you talking about, no orange juice and garlic, and I would die without garlic. <laughs> and uh, so I started to adapt my counseling to uh, local people and what they needed and uh, find ways for them to regain their health under the terms that were acceptable and doable uh, by them. And uh, just gradually did more counseling and started a, a professional training program, which was really initially a macrobiotic uh, professional training program with all macrobiotic teachers. And uh, then the audience, what people wanted were different dietary theories and trying to understand why macrobiotics did not work for some people, and eventually I landed on the idea of teaching all the different dietary theories and then allowing people to understand the pros and cons of each one. And uh, really, you know, it, it really based on the individual and then people based on their gender, their culture, their climate, their age could be able to choose foods. And you know, they, mostly it's a plant-based diet. Doesn't have to be Japanese foods. So you, it's kind of a, you're using the kind of non-credo approach to macrobiotic. Totally non-credo, and I, also the macrobiotic lifestyle suggestions, which were just brilliant. Mm. And uh, to me, that was such a big part of macrobiotics. Yeah. And to be able to have that is what became what we teach is primary food. Yeah which is the things that nurture us in life, uh, love and relationship and spiritual practice, having a meaningful career and being fit, uh, differentiate our school from other schools that teach about health and nutrition. We happen to be now, we are the largest nutrition school in the world. We train 1,600 students uh, this year. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I just really appreciate Michio and Abilene and all the macrobiotic teachers for the passion and the commitment to having people understand that food changes our blood mm. and food changes everything. I really remember Michio like years and years ago talking about how uh, before there was green movement or the environment talking about how uh, people needed to eat a plant-based diet. Mm. So. Um how do you see like the issues that are happening in the world with uh, global warming, uh, the problems with the economy? Uh, how do you see kind of this holistic macrobiotic lifestyle? Uh, it's getting very popular now, but how, how do you see it all working together, creating a solution? I don't know. I, I think the more people eat food that's not fit for human consumption, the more people stop having human behavior and human responses to situations. So I think it's tragic that people are eating so much uh, chemicalized artificial junk food and having chemicalized artificial 
chunk response to themselves, their families, their community, their environment, and the planet. Mm. But, you know, one thing leads to another. So it's really our mission to be able to communicate to one person at a time and create a ripple effect around the world yeah. so that people eat sustainable diet and that we can continue to have our one precious planet. So, you, in one way you're creating, Obama was talking about new green jobs and investing a lot in uh, creating new green jobs. So, do you think a lot of the jobs will come through a nutritional school, uh, creating Well, cooks I don't know about that. I, I think that, you know, what's interesting is America spends two and a half trillion, that's not million, that's not billion, that is trillion dollars every single year on health care. Mm. Far more than any other country in the world by far. Mm. So you would think that Americans would walk around as being the epitome of good health. Mm. You'd be, oh my god, there's an American, they spend so much money on health care. Mm. And yet Americans are rated so poorly and you can tell an American by their weight. And So I think the real um, gift is that there will be a revolution in the health care system. Americans are tired of medications and operations. They've been fed these untruths. Basically, huh? they've been told, you just you know, live it up, eat whatever you want, and take this pill, and it'll all go away. Well, wouldn't it upset the industries, the sugar industries, the pharmaceuticals? Uh, isn't, well, even in the 70s, it was a little bit of a threat to the system. Sure, their lobbyists and their campaign financing will try to push down this revolution as long as possible. In the same way, the oil companies tried to push down the electric car. Mm. But eventually, grassroots people win. Word of mouth. Time for change. And it's really important, people watching the video, that not only that we take care of ourselves and our little bubble that we live in, mm. but that we use this new energy to be able to uh, share mm. with other people and uh, you know, create the future that we want for ourselves and be leaders in making this happen. So what do you think, think uh, like uh, Facebook is growing so fast and inter social networking seems to be like the new word of mouth. Um, what do you think about this? I really appreciate when uh, Michel Kushi talks about the transition from Homo sapien to Homo spiritus. Mm. And I think why Facebook and things are so popular is because at the end of the day, we're, we are all one. And so this intermelding, integrative energy brings us all together, whether, whatever gender, whatever race, whatever age, whatever continent we are. At the end of the day, this one little tiny planet in a tiny solar system in a massive infinite universe. And we're starting to realize that and uh, save what we have and create a future for our children and for the future. So what would you say to someone starting macrobiotics? What a piece of advice would you give to them? Have fun. <laughs> don't, don't be too serious. The worst is over. And I think by sharing more, uh, we learn more and we grow more. So thank you very much. You're and, welcome. Uh, thank you.